Hello, my name is Lawrence Miller, and I'd like to present to you uh, my thesis project, Outreach. But first, I'd like to show you a little video just on Outreach. So one in six students nationwide seriously considered suicide last year, uh, and for LGBTQ plus youth, that number triples. LGBTQ youth women rejecting families are 8.4 times more likely to have attempted suicide uh, from family rejection. Uh, and 40% of LGBTQ plus youth are homeless, meanwhile, they only represent 7% of the population of the US. These statistics come directly from the Triple Project, which is an LGBTQ plus nonprofit, which works to help with dating and um, so as stated in the video, <clears throat> Outreach is going to be a community nonprofit center for LGBTQ plus youth. It will mainly focus on outreach as well as uh, displaced youth. However, there is also a spot coffee shop, uh, a health clinic, youth education classes, and then mixed meal spaces as well. So with, this, uh, with Outreach, the question that I pose is, can formal identities and material references evoke feelings of comfort and safety for a marginalized group? Um, and with that, the thesis concept that I've created are formal identities and the impact on queer spaces. Uh, with queer spaces, the only two that exist currently are political and sexual. There is no really kind of neutral space that exists. Um, this is a space that will somehow be neutral. Uh, we're in an acting queer as political, so there really is no um, diversifying from that. This, the concept aids from um, the triangle, which was used during Nazi Germany, there's the Pink Triangle, which was then reclaimed during the AIDS crisis of the 80s. Uh, so it's kind of this reclaiming of this title that put us uh, against oppressors. With this triangle, <coughs> I've used this form and rounded the triangle to kind of create this more softer geometry. Uh, and focusing on outreach's main goals, which were incorporated in the video, outreach, growth, and community. With this triangle, I then was able to create my floor T, which I then mirrored across the floor plate of the first main building. Um, and really was able to kind of hash out these um, public versus private areas, public being in the center of that triangle and being those mixed communal spaces. So with the communal integration, um, the outside community being able to access this uh, central unit within Buffalo uh, being the first main building, how that would integrate, and then how the public separation would start to phase out, uh, making the first floor being completely public, then the next two floors, which the first floor is just gonna be the entrance area and lobby area. Um, in the back will be the coffee shop. The next two floors are gonna be the classroom spaces. So again, those are still that public area that you're getting access to. On the fourth floor, we have the healthcare clinic. Um, so again, that's still a public area. However, it's gonna be very private just to protect those who come to use the clinic. Moving up are the offices on the fifth floor. Um, those are gonna be public, or private, sorry. However, they will have some access to the public so that you are able to come in, learn about the residences and learn about outreach, as well as donors coming in. The next two floors are gonna be the residences. Those are the top two floors. 
they're going to be completely private from the public access. Uh, this just creates a safe and secure environment for the user. So again, the project is located in Buffalo, New York, uh, and the reason why is because within the area of Western New York and Buffalo, the only related space that is LGBTQ plus uh, working with homeless youth and displaced youth is in New York City. So that is a long distance to travel for LGBTQ plus youth. Uh, so placing this air, this building in Buffalo really helps to kind of access those um, youth who are in the New York area and interested in shop there. The first main building is located in downtown Buffalo on 403 Main Street. Uh, it is a beautiful Italianate building. Uh, it was built in 1840 and it has this beautiful natural daylight access. Um, however, it, the top of the building uh, on the second floor used to have a beautiful um, skylight that was taken out during the 1980s about. Uh, so with that, I am deciding to bring that back just to kind of bring that daylight back into the space. The first main building being in the center of Buffalo, City Hall being directly adjacent, uh, you have access to the Buffalo Metro, which you can see in the rendering, so that can get you around Buffalo and kind of lead the youth to the center of the area. The space is for ages uh, 6 to 18. Um, the youth that are displaced probably will be around the ages 11 to 18. Um, the younger ages are for the educational classes, which again uh, incorporates the community integration. So starting with the floor plans, um, walking in you're greeted into the reception area with a staircase that is uh, mixed seating as well as a staircase that goes up to the second floor. There are um, areas to sit within that floor. Um, and then again, as the video stated, uh, incorporating art from Albright Knox Museum. It was a museum which in 2020 was closing down for two years. Uh, so this also will bring uh, access to that art to be placed somewhere on hold until the museum is open back up. Um, so on display that we have uh, Chantal Martin, who is a black queer artist, um, and then we have Janet Ackerman, who is a female artist, and just showcasing kind of this integration of art. In the back area, again, as I stated, we have the cafe. Uh, that's going to be Pop Coffee, which is a local Buffalo um, coffee shop, so it brings that community integration. You have that familiarity with something that you know and that you're going to love, so you're able to come into that space. Uh, across from that, we have the event space, which can be rented out to the public. Again, that brings in that community integration. It also brings a form of profit for the space. The lounge area is just mixed seating for the community. Uh, you can grab a cup of coffee, and you can go there and just sit in the lounge. So moving up to the second floor, as you make your way up the staircase, you're greeted by the beautiful the skylight, which I have mentioned before, bringing back into that space. Um, and then you're greeted also by a lounge area and a beautiful mural, which has the outdoor logo on it. The second floor, again, as I had stated, that's going to be mainly public. Uh, there, there's the classroom spaces that it, they're accessible for the community. So if they ever want to have a lecture hall or lecture series, the community can come out and interact with those LGBTQ plus youth in the space. Um, this is uh, one of those classrooms. So with the classroom spaces, I really wanted to make them movable. Um, the furniture really needs to have this functionality so you can move it around for lectures. With the palettes that I've created, um, they're really differentiating the spaces and delineating them. Um, however, there are some similarities between the two, moving in from the lobby to the classroom space. Um, um, so you have this kind of mix as you go, but you're still where you have this um, beautiful palette that has similarities. So the classroom spaces will also incorporate a glass, a back painted glass, so you have access to draw on them. You can also paint with magnets, so it really is kind of this beautiful format. Moving up to the third floor again uh, are more classroom spaces. The two in the front are going to be completely rented out. Um, these can be for any form of um, shop that is happening within Buffalo. A lot of times they like to have pop-ups for the community to really access that. The multi-use uh, space can be used for those as well as classroom spaces as well. The, this floor will also be mainly for the younger uh, students who come in. There are more smaller seating for ages around six to 10, so they have this access above this higher floor. There really is that kind of safety within the space. With the elevator access, the two elevators on this left side, those are going to be for floors one, two, floor five. Um, so those are going to be the public access elevators. And then the other two are floor six to seven. Um, those elevators can only be accessed with a key card. And then once you get into the elevator, it can only get the access to the key card to go up to floor uh, six and seven. That is for the residences to keep it completely safe and secure. Um, you don't want anyone being able to access the space that shouldn't be. So moving up to the fourth floor is the health clinic. Um, this is a space that really needs to occur within Buffalo, New York. 
there is no LGBTQ plus safe space where you can get health care uh, as well as primary care. Uh, so this is going to be a mental health facility on one side and then physical health on the other. Um, so with this space, you really want it to be comfortable. You want the youth coming in to feel that they act, that the people within outreach actually care about their well-being. So creating a comfortable palette using this nice green energetic hue, um, as well as the soft touch of the cells, um, really making this kind of a beautiful and comfortable space. However, making sure is this the mental health space? Or yes, it? that's going to be the mental health. Um, so in the rendering that I have, this is the main palette. Uh, within the health room, of course, it's going to be uh, comfortable. However, it will still be uh, clean and friendly. So since this is a clinic, it will be accessible for people who have little to no insurance. So LGBTQ plus youth can access this space and not have their parents know and kind of have this confidentiality within the space as well. Moving up to the fifth floor is we, where we have the offices. Uh, so this is for outreach as well as the Pride Center. The Pride Center is the main sponsor <coughs> for this space, uh, the Pride Center of Western New York. So they're gonna, really gonna be having an office which is located um, nearly adjacent to where the building exists now, they own a house. Um, however, they're now going to move their offices to this main space. They have this kind of central unit within the space. On the other side are the outreach facilities. Um, it's going to be mainly for the supervisors and heads uh, for, the, for, for uh, outreach and the offices. Um, so the rendering, again, creating this motif that I have uh, with that rounded triangle and using that as kind of a conceptual way, cutting into this belt. Um, and using this purple palette, which really has this uh, kind of sophisticated hue and adding in the pops of blue. Uh, with the palettes, the colors that match go along with the stacking diagram. So the yellow would be the classroom, the green is for the healthcare, blue is for uh, the offices, and then the purple is for the Moving on to the sixth floor is one of the beginning residences. Again, only accessing from the right elevators, just so they have that safe and security. Um, as you walk out, you're greeted by this beautiful wood flooring for the rest of the spaces. Uh, the kitchen is located on the sixth floor just because it is kind of a public area within this, it being private. So it's public just to uh, the users for the residences. We have this mixed integration. On the opposite side, we have gym as well as rec rooms. So the youth are able to run around, they're able to play, um, they can have a workout if they would like. And then there's also a studio space if they ever want to do some work. Um, on this floor as well are offices, which double as a living facility. So if ever there is someone who is using the space who is managing the youth within it, they can stay the night if they would like to. Moving up to the seventh floor is where we begin the bedrooms for the residences. So with the residences, there are singles, doubles, and triples for the living facility. The singles being towards the core of the building. They are gonna be more of the RAs, so they're gonna be the residence assistants uh, around the ages of 18, keeping care of the youth that are in the facility, so they have this kind of um, growth and are able to really kind of implement into the future. So um, the double, again, they're just, these rooms are really supposed to be person personable, uh, kind of can personalize them to their liking. Um, in this space as well, we have uh, the Buffalo Pennant, which was created by Oxford Pennant, which is a local Buffalo craftsman. Um, they did pennants for companies, they just had a collection of day crew. Um, so that's going to be exist and donated to this space, so then they are able to pick from the catalog and really kind of personalize the space. This space, um, the blues and greens uh, are meant just to be kind of this calming and cooling color. Blue is a calming color, and green again is a little bit energetic, but you really have this calming atmosphere within the bedroom. So overall within outreach, uh, it's this public space which can be created very private. It is mixed communal and it is used for LGBTQ plus youth. Uh, and I really wanted to incorporate the three columns again that outreach growth and community and create a community space where LGBTQ plus youth can thrive.